Hi everyone, the Lord Wolf here and welcome to the Sunday recap, my weekly vlog where I cover my last week in gaming or so. And let's get started with some EVE Online. I played, I think, a little bit less than average EVE Online last week. I was actually pretty damn busy at work, but uh, I still managed to do the normal stuff. A little bit of mining. In fact, there's one evening where uh, I was boosting for several hours, uh, boosted for several hours by an Orca in local. Uh, that was very nice. Uh, you know, it does boost your mining output by quite a little bit and makes it decently profitable to then just keep going for a few hours while while you're watching a movie or something like that. Um, so yeah, just uh, an average. Uh, amount of EVE Online, probably a little bit less than that. I did still go with the Blueprint Copy Market, which is selling less, but the ones that are selling are still selling at a very good price. So there are a few of those construction components that still sell for 19, 20 and even more uh, millions of ISK. And uh, that's, that's definitely pretty good to, to keep up with, of course, because uh, fewer of them are selling now, I am starting to have uh, some of my contracts lapse. So after two weeks, if you don't find a buyer, you have to basically delete the contract and you lose your deposit. Uh, that is starting to happen a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm out producing the amount that I'm selling by quite a bit now. So I basically uh, am starting to have quite a collection of blueprint copies that don't sell for a good price anymore in Cheetah. So I'll, I'll have to try to balance out uh, the amount of copies that I make, which copies that I make with uh, some extra new blueprints that I, I'll need to buy where I can then improve the material efficiency and uh, the uh, time efficiency. So I think that's that's basically uh, the plan next. Uh, what I'm looking forward to in EVE Online is of course the Shadows of the Serpent event uh, that should be coming out next week uh, or no, it's the week after that. Uh, I think that could be pretty damn interesting uh, if CCP handles this the right way. This could actually give people a reason to uh, come back to the game, to continually come back to the game as well if they can keep making uh, these story events uh, available for a period of like six weeks or, or more or less depending on, on what they actually want to do. I think that could be a very interesting addition to the game and uh, I think that's where my focus will be in the uh, in the next few weeks uh, we'll see how everything plays out of course but uh, on the citadel front we're still doing quite all right i just haven't pulled the trigger yet on buying a tech 2 blueprint for the reprocessing i should probably look back into that see what they cost um, and if i actually want to invest in that but uh, still uh, a lot of fun of course uh, eve online is still my main game uh, by far and uh, i'm enjoying it uh, just at a pretty uh, slower at a somewhat slower pace I should say uh, than in the last few weeks I think it will pick back up when the Shadow of the Serpent event uh, comes out or starts um, the other game that I still played some of is uh, Overwatch it, it can definitely still hold my interest I would say almost every day not every day but almost every day uh, playing at least uh, three four games of Overwatch uh, just having some fun with this the, the accessibility of this game is of course incredible. Um, what helps? I mean, it's probably a psychological thing, something that shouldn't uh, play a part, but the fact that they now have like 10 million players, that it is really a game that is uh, coming on the forefront of a lot of, uh, of media, just straight up on Reddit, uh, news articles, great reviews, all of that stuff, um, just help you stay interested in the game. But on top of that, of course, it's a Blizzard game, extremely polished, very accessible, uh, great mechanics. I actually enjoy a lot of the heroes, uh, although some of them I still need to learn, like uh, Lucio, never really played him, but potentially can be extremely powerful. Uh, Farah, for instance, uh, I think that she is extremely powerful, but combining her different movement abilities with the jetpack, with her rocket uh, main fire, I mean, firing mode, I think is, is definitely something that takes more skill. Uh, you need to be able to aim to predict a little bit better, all of that stuff. And for people like me that don't have that uh, much uh, FPS experience anymore, I mean, I used to play a lot of Counter-Strike, but that's so far gone now. Uh, and uh, it's probably my, my age that my reflexes are going down a little bit. You do have other heroes that are perfect for you, right? The Torbjorn, uh, Soldier 76, actually really easy to handle. Uh, Mercy, you don't really need to aim too much with Mercy. You just need to be able to position yourself correctly. Uh, um, Reaper, I think Reaper is also a very accessible hero actually. Junkrat, you definitely instinctively know that Junkrat 
like it needs to stay back a little bit and needs to bombard the enemy positions so there's a little bit for everyone right you can have high skilled characters that are that are extremely fast paced and need to have great aim um, but you can also just play this pretty casually uh, with other characters that are more utility based or that don't need as much skill uh, in order to get their hits or to to get their damage out there so yeah overwatch honestly i think it's a pretty cool game um, and uh, i'm enjoying it just i'm planning to play this extremely casually just a couple games um a day i think is, is the maximum that i'm putting myself on uh, the main reason for that is that i don't want to burn myself out on the game right ccp is going to come out with uh, with competitive mode i may dabble into that but it's definitely not going to be something that i'm going to push for um, but uh, yeah just enjoy overwatch casually so that you can keep enjoying it um, hopefully right i can last long enough so that uh, Blizzard has the time to develop maybe some new game modes, some new maps, maybe add a few characters and if you can actually bridge that gap in a casual way, I think you can actually have a lot of hours and a lot of fun, uh, a lot of value out of your purchase of Overwatch. That's basically my plan when it comes to that game. Um, I also played some Fallout 4, especially in the first uh, half of the week. Uh, I actually managed to find a decent amount of time to continue working on my character and oops that's actually an update that i need to do but uh, we'll see uh, for that after the recording if it's not a problem it doesn't look like it's a problem um so yeah fallout 4 uh, i'm continuing to work with on a minuteman character i think he's like level 34 or 35 or so by now i also have quite a few of the um of the settlements going so i, I put small defensive bunkers uh, just the basics so that it can grow up to like 10 12 people something like that uh, i connect all of those with uh, with with some of those uh, caravans uh, i give those guys miniguns that's a lot of fun if you can watch them just uh, walk around from one settlement to the other they encounter some enemies uh, hold up somewhere they take out the minigun and start spraying that's definitely really cool to watch uh, but yeah the the aim in fallout 4 is basically to uh, to finish all of the settlements get the Minutemen in control of uh, the entire Commonwealth, then grow in power, right? I still need to level up quite significantly. Um, probably grow to uh, go through the main story up until uh, the, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel arrives. And then I think I'll take a look uh, at the uh, at the new DLC there and uh, probably make a few videos. But it's, it's still quite a bit of work, honestly. Uh, I think I'll aim for at least level 50 and 30, 435 to level 50 i think is still a decent amount of work uh, but i'm in no hurry either so if i miss a few days or don't play fallout 4 for a few days it's uh it's not a big problem the way i'm setting up my settlements now with like small bunkers based on the concrete uh, that uh, the new concrete uh, building blocks that you can use there uh, it's actually really easy for me to pick the game back up even if i don't play it for a few days uh, that that was always my problem with uh, with uh, Bethesda games like Skyrim, like Fallout 4 now, is that um, if I play for, let's say, one or two weeks on a character, uh, and then I drop that character for a week, when I come back to the game, I actually f f uh, feel more like starting fresh, starting a new character, trying something completely different in the game. Um, and so it was always very hard for me to actually progress to the final parts of the game. But here in Fallout 4, uh, I think I'm actually managing to, uh, to stay that off and uh, to keep going. Um, something else actually um, that, uh, that I just bought is uh, StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. So with, uh, with the end of the uploads for StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm, um, not a lot of people watch this, but honestly I enjoy the process and I see this as a good practice for me. So I'm planning to do the entire StarCraft 2 series as one big um, as one big series on the channel. We'll see when I restart the uploads, I'm not sure, but uh, I did purchase the next uh, part of, uh, of the story there, which is Legacy of the Void. Um, honestly, I've already seen that as well from Jesse Cox's uh, series uh, on StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void, so I already know what's happening. Uh, but yeah, it's just a bit of practice for me because those games tend to be quite a bit longer. Um, I'm not really good at uh, real-time strategy, so I need to uh, basically find the right uh, amount of focus on the game and the focus on the commentary as well 
Um, so that's basically something that I'm also going to start working on is, uh, is uh, the next part of the StarCraft 2 series. Um, th there'll be some time that I'll need to spend in that, but uh, personally, you know, I do enjoy just playing through the story of the StarCraft games, uh, even though I know that the ending of Legacy of the Void is, is not really great. Um, and I also enjoy just the process of playing through the game and then uh, creating a series out of that basically a let's play series because I only focus on the mission parts themselves uh, I do feel it it's not exactly fair to Blizzard to also add all of the cutscenes in there honestly if you want to uh, have the entire story all of the awesome cutscenes that Blizzard has made uh, then I just uh, personally think that you should purchase the games because uh, in my opinion it, it's worth it just playing through the campaign once or twice is going to get your money's worth time wise and uh, it's again it's it's one of those Blizzard experiences extremely polished uh, great mechanics no crashes whatsoever just a, a perfect um, mechanical wise this, these games are almost perfect uh, and uh, I definitely enjoy them but yeah Starcraft 2 uh, RTS I don't play it that much I'm definitely not good at it uh, and so it's not something that I play in multiplayer I basically buy these games for uh, for the campaign mode um, and then finally I may want to touch on E3 um, I watched a little bit of E3, but uh, definitely not everything. I'm, I'm, not, I'm completely not up to date on that. Um, but I, I think that there are some games that are pretty interesting uh, that I may check out uh, when they come out. Um, so uh, here, for instance, a top 10 could be somewhat interesting. So we've got For Honor. I think it was like a chivalry, but with actually a story mode and then uh, some differently themed um, um, tribes basically like Vikings and Samurai and things like that I think it looks it, it could be pretty cool uh, I definitely enjoyed playing chivalry a little bit when when that came out so it's it's probably something that I may check out uh, Battlefield 1 um, if it's a good game then that is probably a battlefield that I may purchase and uh, and play uh, but I, I personally I do think that I'll wait for the reviews because we've been burnt on battlefield games before so I'll be very careful here but it's definitely something that I'll uh, keep an eye on uh, what else is in this top 10 uh, Final Fantasy 15 I've never played a Final Fantasy game so honestly I don't plan to do that I need the time right to to uh, to be able to do this and start a completely new series that's actually gigantic in proportions like Final Fantasy is just not on the radar for me at the moment uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon probably not Cyberpunk 2077 uh, no idea what this is actually a known release date as well so I don't think I need to worry about that uh, too soon Mass Effect Andromeda coming December 2017 so obviously you've got a long time to wait for that but I did play through the Mass Effect series uh, I, I thought those were pretty good games so those that's like a maybe uh, Batman Return to Arkham um, Batman is, is interesting actually because I know that these are pretty damn good games uh, I just never pulled the trigger on them even on Steam sales I could never convince myself that I would have the time to play through these Batman games but I would say that uh, there's still something that are on the back of my mind uh, to, to jump into the Batman series especially if like on a Steam sale you can pick up uh, the entire series up until now for a very cheap price then that's obviously something that, that'll, that'll uh, keep you busy for more than enough hours and uh, they are supposed to be really good games except for the last one maybe uh, with some uh, problems with the, uh, the Batman uh, car and, and some of the some of the parts of the game there but um yeah it's it's still it's still uh, i wouldn't say on my radar but in the back of my mind that at some point uh, i may want to check out the the batman series there um titanfall 2 um maybe and i didn't play the titanfall 1 uh, a lot of people were impressed with titanfall at the very start but it dropped off very quickly uh, after that so the player base basically didn't enjoy the game say it's, it's pretty good game but probably too light on content and uh, that's why the player base just declined too quickly which can be a real problem for online games of course so titanfall 2 i'll definitely wait for the reviews and for all of that information uh, mafia 3 never really played a mafia game so i couldn't tell you anything about that and then call of duty infinite warfare uh no call of duty uh, is 
uh, I'm, I'm in the opposite when it comes to that it's an extremely popular series but uh, that's the reason why I have no interest in, in actually starting uh, Call of Duty or anything like that so yeah in general right E3 I, I think that there are some individual games that I that I am interested in uh, that uh, that I will keep uh, on my radar and uh, f try to dig up information as it comes out but I'm um, definitely not all of them or I didn't feel like uh, this E3 was super special for me personally uh, what I did notice is that there's a lot of focus on like 3D uh, on stuff like the Vive and the Oculus Rift and, and things like that, game for that. Although a lot of that is, is definitely out in, in the f further future. Um, it is a trend that I, I think we'll need to keep uh, an eye on as well. Will that break through? Will that falter again? It's, it's still difficult to say. Personally, I fully enjoy just sitting on my desk and, and playing on a screen. Uh, but I can understand how 3D can actually add an, a whole new level of immersion. And if there's one thing that could actually trigger me to purchase something like a Vive, it would of course be Fallout 4 that uh, Bethesda is planning to make fully available on the uh, HTC Vive there. So playing in the Fallout 3 world with a character that you've basically built up, but then you can uh, basically walk around in that world and experience that as, as a full 3D experience, I think could be something that, that, that can be absolutely amazing. So yeah, the uh, the 3D stuff is, is also something that um, while I'm not jumping in right now, honestly, I think it's a little bit too soon to drop like eight, 900 euros for, for, uh, for one of those uh, complete sets. Um, with all the controllers and everything. Uh, honestly, I think it's a little bit too soon because there's just not that much available outside of Valkyrie. I don't really know of any games that have been able to stand out. And even Valkyrie, I only know because I play EVE Online. So uh, I think it's too early. Uh, I'm not planning to purchase an HTC Vive right now, but um, as more of these games are developed and have the ability to be played uh, on, on the 3D goggles, uh, I think at some point I may actually uh, jump in, uh, but that will all depend of course on how this, uh, this trend uh, can if this trend can last or not and uh, that's going to be pretty interesting uh, but uh, yeah I think that that was basically my week uh, last week so uh, a bit less EVE online than I usually do and uh, that's probably uh, what the uh, the issue was right uh, when we got uh, the message um, a decent amount of overwatch just in a pretty casual way some fallout 4 at the start of the week and some starcraft 2 at the end of the week and throughout the week i did try to dig up some information uh, at e3 and i would say some games are a standout for me uh, but a lot of them well we'll see uh, if, if maybe something exceptional comes out but uh, not that much is on my radar from e3 except of course the 3d thing uh, that does seem to be gaining more momentum we'll see if it can uh, continue to do so anyways that's it for this sunday recap guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.